Stabat Mater Dona Rosa, Juxta Crucem Lacrimosa, Lacrimosa, Dum Pendebat, Dum Pendebat, The Invocazione album is a good combination. Actually, we, we unite two aspects of my recording catalog. We have the previously unrecorded repertoire. Most people will have never heard. Then we combine it with Vivaldi Stabat Mater. So we have something for the musicologists in the audience and some for the people who are happy to hear an old friend in a new clothes. I think it's about 20 years ago when a friend, a producer, suggested that I should work together with this Italian Baroque Orchestra, Accademia Byzantina. And we had a test concert at the Bonn Festival just to see how the chemistry between me and the orchestra would be. And it was very clear to me and I think also to the orchestra that it was an excellent combination. And ever since, We've played plenty of concerts together. They are my favorite Baroque orchestra and uh, we developed uh, an understanding about musical ideas that is almost telepathic. I knew about the oratorios that had a biblical subject. They elaborated on biblical stories, mainly New Testament, so we have stories of the crucifixion and then around the original text from the New Testament, a librettist wrote a story and uh, all the figures, the female protagonists like Maria, Maria Magdalena, and they were all sung by men and I was fascinated by this idea that it is certainly not meant to be a travesty and how can I as a man sing the role of the Virgin Mary or Mary Magdalene? As a religious person I myself have to admit that the concept of God is very abstract and I think the attraction of the Virgin Mary lies in the fact that she was a human being. She was the mother of Jesus and she is a figure of identification. So if we listen to the Stabat Mater, which is about the mother crying or mourning for her son that has been killed, it's a universal story and it makes God and Jesus in a way more accessible. The stories, of course, all in all these areas, we have uh, the Virgin Mary appearing as a protagonist. She sings herself. And in the Vivaldi Stabat Mater, the singer turns into commentator. So I talk about the suffering of that woman. It's a combination of um, suffering with the Virgin Mary, with Mary for her son, but it's also Mary talking herself to us in these beautiful arias from the oratorios. So they're very positive messages and it is split between the suffering and the optimistic. I would say that the virtuosity in these pieces is a special virtuosity. It certainly wasn't meant to show off the skills of the singers as it was meant in Baroque opera. So in Baroque opera, the da capo ornamentation is an essential part for the singer to present their skills. In the religious repertoire, I believe that the ego of the singer should be 
erased and eliminated. So I'm, as a singing actor, turning into the Virgin Mary or Mary Magdalene or being the commentator on, on the die, death of Jesus and the suffering of Mary, I cannot have any vanity and I should not show off. I recorded Vivaldi Stabat Mata for the first time, I think, in 1993 or 94. I have changed a lot. I'm 55 years now old compared to 25 or 27. And I always thought, ah, one day I want to record this piece again because I have gained so much more knowledge about it and I am such a different person to sing this. Also the tessitura of my voice is lower now. I can sing the low parts much easier. For me there's no doubt that I needed to record this again. Listening habits have changed over the years, so I think that a recording like the Stabat Mater in itself should be a trip, a journey. So ideally you should sit in a quiet room with a good headphone or a good pair of loudspeakers, dim down the lights and listen to the recording from beginning till end. I think it will take you on a journey and it will be great comfort in, in difficult times. Thank you.